I'm with Olamide Faison, who plays Junior in the play. On stage, like, you really gotta live in the moment and, and, and understand who you are. Not who you are, but who that person that you are on stage is. Olamide Faison, who plays Junior in the play. How did, how, did, right. how did the role come to you? Well, all right. Well, Junior is a, was a troubled youth. Um, he comes from a, a family where uh, basically his mother and father weren't really getting along. Um, his pops was, you know, beating the dreams out of my mother. And then she moved on from that relationship and got to another abusive relationship with my stepfather. Uh, who basically, uh, I don't want to say too much about the play, but you know, it definitely was an abusive relationship. And um, so I grew up around that a lot, and I got into trouble uh, with my best friend in the play. And you know, I, I kind of decided to go to school and and change, you know, change change my ways. And to help me do that, I met the lovely Aisha. And uh, yeah, that's that's Junior in a nutshell. And uh, basically, you know, trying to find find a way to love, you know, find the time to love throughout throughout this course of life. Um, how it came about, me. I mean, I don't really know how to put that together. Uh, I mean, was it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we. You know what? Um, some of the questions that I did ask, well, you know, well, how did you find it? Was it a networking event, and, and you oh. knew Charday, and she said, you know what? I'm doing this play, and All I'm right. looking for. All right. So this is how. Open it casting. I'll tell you how it happened. I um, I grew up in this theater. Um, I'm always here, and uh, I was I was presented uh, this this role as, of Junior. Um, I auditioned, but uh, I, I was told that you know they had me in mind at one point or another. And I've never done a play before, so I was first time. First time, like this is my first time on the stage, and so I was very nervous to say yes, I was very scared to say no, because I grew up here, so it's like family, you don't tell family no, you always show up for family, and so, um, but you know, I, I, I committed myself, and I got through, you know, the, the, this roller coaster of fear, and um, you know, it, it no longer exists with me in this space, so yeah, that's how the role came about. Because as you mentioned, if this is home, there's no fear at home, or shouldn't be anyway. No, not at all. Yeah, what was it like seeing Stevie Wonder? I mean, I'm a huge Stevie fan, so yeah, to hear song after song throughout the show just blew my mind. What was it like singing Stevie? It was amazing, actually. Um, you know, I've, I've heard these records before, but I've never really, like, dug into them and, like, really understood the dialogue. Like, you know, because Stevie can sing, so whatever he says... You, you kind of like it anyway. I mean, he could have told you, you know, hot grease in a pan, and, and you'd be like, ooh, that was great, you know? But, um, so, like, having, you know, being junior and having to take time to really listen to these words and how they coexist with what's going on on stage really made me understand, you know, where he was coming from when he wrote these songs and um, the impact that they have on human nature and, and how, you know, you can, you can, transform within I don't know eight bars of a song like you may be sad but at the end of the song you're happy again you know and he had and he has that power that that voice to uh, really translate to people um, which is great so you know singing it it was amazing and you know, I always get wrapped up in the songs because I love to sing and yeah yeah it's just amazing <laughs> If you had, you know, there's a what they call a two-minute elevator pitch, right? You have two minutes with someone very, very important that you want to see this play who says, you know something, I'm going to finance this play for five years, but you've got to sell it to me. What would you say to that person about this wonderful play? Wow. Well, first off, I would have been in the mirror for about... <laughs> four days before I even had this opportunity practicing this speech, but since I only have two seconds, um, the person, wow, I mean, 
I would say the president. Um, but I feel like somebody said that already. If they had the same question. But if they didn't, Barack Obama and Michelle Obama. And I would tell them, look, listen, this world is dying for change. Um, I'm in a play on 125th Street and 5th Avenue at the National Black Theater, and it's called The Time to Love. Um, we use Stevie Wonder's music to really convey the message of, of love throughout the play. And, you know, I'm not saying I need your whole life, but just give me an hour or two for you to digest the information that we're relating to people, relaying to people in the audience and to the world. And I promise you, I promise you, Mr. Obama, that um, you'll get it and want to spread the word. That's a beautiful thing. Uh, we at HarlemTalkRadio.com, we always encourage people we speak with to talk about their craft, you know, their dedication, their discipline, right? How do you prepare for your role? How did you prepare for the role of junior? Let's just go there. Well, all right, so this was like my first time, right? So I didn't know how to prepare, prepare first. Um, I would come to rehearsals and really see everybody. I had to really learn as I go. Um, I saw the focus of all my other castmates, and that really showed me where it comes from. You know, like you know, people say, acting, you're acting. You know, but like on stage, like you really gotta live in the moment and. and and understand who you are, not who you are, but who that person that you are on stage is. And, and until you get that, you're, you're still gonna be acting, you know? And so, after a few rehearsals, I had a moment where, you know, I connected to everything going on around me. And from that moment on, I, you know, I, I just, the moment I touch the stage, like I touch everything, like, you know, just to, to feel my environment and, and, and know that this is this is where I'm at, you know? I mean, it may be a set, but this is, I mean, I'm in the park over there, you know? I'm, uh, I'm, at, I'm at Rashid's house where we are right now, so I had to really embody that to, to be able to relay it. So that's how I prepare is by literally touching things and, and, and taking deep breaths and, 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 and owning the space and the moment in which I am at this point. Speak to young people who are struggling, you know, in our communities with making those choices, those hard choices. Do I stay broke or do I go to school and try to do something with myself? Still being broke, by the way, but at least going in another direction. Um, talk to those kids who struggle with doing the wrong thing versus doing the right thing. Well, lack of words, I'll probably just say, what would your mama tell you, you know? And if they're not around, what would your daddy tell you? And if they're not around, what would your teacher tell you? Or your grandmother? Like, you gotta understand, like, happiness comes from within. All this stuff around us is temporary, you know? But the one thing that keeps us going is self-pride. And then you really gotta ask yourself, who are you to you? You know what I mean? Um, this this world can can knock you down easy, you know. But it takes a fighter to, to stand up against it. And you may not feel like you're winning all the time, but when you do right within, you'll be all right in the end. It's a nice close for me. We're with Olamide Faison, who plays Jr in A Time to Love here at the National Black Theater in the house that Dr. Tier built. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you.